you've got book time. No, we don't do online orders. We're an actual brick and mortar bookstore. Yeah? Thank you for the business advice. Keep that in mind. Mr. Cooper. Sarah. Still knocking him dead, I see. Hmm. What can I do for you today? Well, just a reminder. The new lease kicks in next week. I haven't signed it. Well, that's your problem. At a glance, I'm guessing that's the least of your problems. Seriously, who buys books anymore? Readers. Readers buy books. I happen to be a reader, Mr. Cooper, and I've been reading up on tenants' rights. You can't just double the rent on a whim. It's illegal. Is it? Since the redevelopment began, real estate prices in the area have skyrocketed. There's nothing like a new high-end housing development to cure a few ills. And as such, it's within my rights to command fair market value upon the expiration of your current lease. He's right. It's not illegal. It's immoral. Immoral? Ooh. Another reader. My mother stuck by you, Mr. Cooper, through thick and thin. All of your other tenants bailed. You owe her. Martin, uh, we have a customer. You want to see if she needs help, honey? Ooh, a customer. Now, scoot. Oh, I'd hire her in a heartbeat. Ew. That is illegal. I'll be back at the end of the day. New lease in hand. You'll either sign it or you won't. It's strictly business, dear. It's kill or be killed out there. Kill or be killed. Come on. How's it going? Guess. You know, this is literally the computer they used to land Apollo 11. Well, that would make it a collector's item. Maybe we could sell it. Ha uh, ha. I hate to admit it, honey, but you were right. Book time needs an online presence. Tomorrow we go shopping for a new computer. How? I heard that, Jagoff. You... We can't afford Jack. We'll find a way. We always do. If you're thinking about firing, well, forget it. I don't get paid as it is. I would never fire you. But it looks like... Dawn? I'm sorry. I really am. She's a sweet kid, but we need to cut down on overhead. Starting with her? Jesus, Mom. We were gonna do dinner and a movie this weekend, Night of the Flesh Eaters. Is that the name of the movie or the dinner? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. If she really likes you... And what's not to like? It won't make any difference. God, you're such a mother. <laughs> That's my job. I'll tell her at lunch. Promise, I'll be gentle. Please let me, let me do it. Okay. Clearing out the cellar. Who knew that roaches came in so many shapes and sizes? Oh, it's that ass hat again, isn't it? She's not an ass hat. She's just out of options. Who? Wait, what are you talking about? My mother. Oh. She needs a miracle. <laughs> Where'd you find this? It's just a bunch of stuff under the stairwell. Image 10, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Image 10. I don't know. Let's open it. Okay. Here. Holy shit. What is it? A miracle. A what? Image 10 is the company that made Night of the Living Dead. Wait, the, the Night, Night of, of the, the Living, Living Dead? Dead? This must have been Romero's office. And if I'm not mistaken, these could be the unfinished horror comics of George Romero. These must be worth a fortune. They were never released. When there's no room left on the page, 
The dead will walk the earth. Hey, 3D glasses inside. I know he loves 3D. <laughs> you know what this means, don't you? I think so, but tell me anyway. Well, for starters, it means you're unfired. Fuck, I was fired? Um, uh, forget it, forget I said that. Hey, do me a solid, grab some plastic sleeves from storage. You got it. doing down there? Uh, I, I fell on my ass. Yeah, I see that. This 3D is phenomenal. Try it. Okay, first things first, we need to get this fortune into plastic. You should go tell your mother what you found. What you found? Here it is, here, check it out. All our problems are solved. It's a miracle. Ew. Brain rot. Ah. Looks like a pretty cheesy miracle to me. <laughs> That's because you're not wearing the special 3D glasses. It says they were designed specifically for these comics. Oh, yeah, 3D doesn't really work on me, honey. Excuse me, could one of you point me to your horror section? Martin is an expert. Would you like to help the gentleman? Yes. Here, right this way. <laughs> we got everything alphabetized. Uh, aliens, blobs, creepy kids, all the way down to uh, xenomorphs, yetis, and zombies. That was my favorite part of the store. You got good taste. Three. A 3D zombie. <laughs> okay. So this is a prank. You're getting back at me for firing your little friend. It's not a prank. It came out of the book after I tried on the glasses. All right, this is not funny. It's not. Don's calling. Like, bro, where are you at? Storeroom. Where are you? I'm in the office working up some pricing. I swear this is the computer that landed Apollo 11. What? Listen, do you trust me? Sure. Then don't ask questions. Lock the door and wait until we get there. Something's in the store. You can't see it, but it's there. Wait, what do you mean I can't see it? So, 
An invisible zombie attacked our only customer. Ouch, that blows. Right? Um, something just slammed up against the glass. Lock the door. <laughs> I gotta save her. An invisible zombie? Really? <laughs> Martin! Damn it! This is jam. Wait a minute. But the glass just brought it out. Maybe I can bring out something else to help us. Oh, you are really pushing it. I mean, I could ground you. It just never seems to work. I just don't... I don't... Perfect. <laughs> Which convention is this? Hey, this used to be my old office. Image 10? Right. <laughs> Who are you? I I'm Martin. This is my, my mother, Sarah. <laughs> ah, nice to meet you. Who are you talking to? I'm sorry, she's, she's not being rude. It's just that she can't see you without these. But that's all right. I can't see her too well without these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, Martin, stop. Hello there. Mom, <laughs> meet George Romero. <laughs> Please, it's just George. <laughs> uh, hello, George. If it's all right, I have about a hundred questions. First, how did I get here? Second, uh... That's all I got. <laughs> uh, Mr. Romero, George. Uh, first off, I, I'm a huge fan. I saw you on Chiller Theater with Bill Cardell when you, when you guys ran Night of the Living Dead uncut. <sighs> and Dawn of the Dead. I changed my learner's permit just so I could get in on opening night. You did what? I'm kidding. And, and these. Brilliant, but uh, they did bring one of your brain rot zombies to life. <laughs> zombies aren't real, kid. The ones I created technically aren't even zombies. I called mine ghouls. <laughs> Bringing a comic book to life, well, that sounds like something straight out of a com... Far out. I always wanted to work in 3D. <laughs> Mr. Romero? Please, it's George. George. Our stock girl's trapped inside the office, and the door is jammed. Does she have any weapons? A machete? Molotov cocktail? A screwdriver in the ear? Uh, she's got like a, like a, a knife. Your friend's a goner. You're, you're king of the zombies. Uh, ghouls. So you invented the genre. You'd know how to stop them. So, so, so what's he saying? What's he saying right now? Um, just general info. Uh, our best bet is to shoot it in the head, destroy the brain, destroy the ghoul. A ghoul? A ghoul. He insists on calling them that. <laughs> and be ready to improvise. If a gun's not available, make do with whatever's handy. Uh, hold that thought, George. Incoming call. Hello? Marty, there's shit in here. Get in here. Whatever you're doing, do it fast. Yeah, I'm working on it. Call you back. Martin, what's your friend doing now? He's improvising. Okay. Then 
Send it to me, smart and honey. Don't want to hurt yourself. I totally dig what you've done with the place. Yeah. Family owned and operated? Yeah. My late husband and I took out some business loan 15 years ago, almost to the day. And you've retained creative control ever since. Far out. Mom! Mom! The glasses! Um, I can see that too. What? Oh, shit. That's a real zombie. Well, we are majorly fucked. There's another pair of glasses. What happens if it puts them on? It means they're learning. They're actually learning. Jesus, it's bringing out more. What? Well, can they get through? Oh, yeah, definitely. They have strength in numbers. Also, I'm not exactly known for my uplifting endings. Yeah, he says yeah. How is this possible? I think I might know how. Back in the day, we delivered our first six comics to the printer, and the stuff looked dynamite. When the guy we'd hired to do the glasses demanded more bread. So my publisher filed a lawsuit, and all our hard work got tossed into a crate. As it turns out, the glasses guy had an uncle who, get this, was a voodoo priest in Trinidad. So the uncle cursed the glasses. A punishment beyond our wildest comprehension. <laughs> Give me a break, right? It's a funny story. No one's laughing. Yeah, we're not laughing because invisible zombies are about to break in. Ghouls, but I see your point. Wait, he's their creator, right? Ask them how to kill him. Yeah. Unfortunately, movie rules don't apply to comics. I was all set to lay down the new rules in issue seven, but we got screwed over by the whole voodoo curse thing. Wait a minute, that's it. Now's your chance. Just write us a happy ending. Finish the story. I can only write them how I see them, kid. From where I'm standing, the odds are stacked against you. your rules. Okay. Uh, there's no power. It's old school. Pen and paper. What? <laughs> Improvise. You need paper? I am paper. <laughs> Destroy the glasses. Destroy the ghoul. How's your shot, kid? Get it in one. George Romero ending. See you around the graveyard, kid. Goodbye, George. Time to pay the piper. The fuck is this? I got a realtor coming in an hour to take pictures. Where's your mother? Hmm? That bitch is gonna pay. 
I'll own her! No can do, Mr. Cooper. Strictly business. Let's kill or be killed out there. <laughs>